Hi, this is John Byrne. We're at Center Court, and we're here with an alum of UNC's Kitten Flagler Business School, Al D. Al is working in the Bay Area uh, for Salesforce. Are you in that really cool new building? Well, I'm from I'm working from home currently, but yes, we're in that new that really cool new building. It's a fantastic building. And Al's a senior manager of uh, product marketing, a uh, customer champion at Salesforce. And before that, right after UNC, he went back to Deloitte, but in a different job in the Bay Area. Uh, before uh, UNC, he was at Deloitte Consulting. Well, welcome. Thank you, John. It's, it's great to be here. Always happy to talk business school and certainly always happy to talk UNC Kenan Flagler. And, you know, as an aside, I should say that Al's done something uh, that very few MBA graduates have done. <laughs> He's, he has launched uh, a site to help MBA applicants primarily, um, and actually, frankly, students and maybe even alums. It's called MBA School. Uh, Al has also written a book um, uh, that gives a sense for how you can use your MBA uh, to jumpstart your career or develop your career interest and, uh, and make uh, good hay out of it, as he has. <laughs> so, so tell me, you know, why did you pick Keaton Flagler to begin with? And what was that experience like? Yeah, and uh, thank you, John. Thank you for having me, and thank you for all the work you do at Poets and Quants. I know you guys have been busy lately, but appreciate all the all the content. So happy to talk a little bit about why UNC. So I was working for Deloitte Consulting out of undergrad, and I, after a couple of years there, I, I knew I wanted to get an MBA. Um, both my parents went to business school. It was always kind of in the in the blood, and you know, I was really working at the intersection of technology and organizational change, and really thinking about how leaders. Um, drive that change in their organizations. And I realized um, it was a little bit of blend of both um, soft skills as well as technical skills that allowed them to drive that change. And that was really one of the um, reasons why I wanted to get an MBA was to kind of be able to blend those two so that one day um, I could be a leader of an organization who could do just that. And when I looked at schools, I think there were a couple of things that I had in mind. Um, number one, I actually was living in the Northeast at the time and I really wanted to get out of the Northeast because I grew up there and I, I just wanted to see a new part of the United States. Um, number two, I wanted a school um, that had a good community feel. Um, I have always done well in uh, my undergrad was Boston College, and it really was, even though it was a big name school, it just felt like a small school. And I really like that small um, mm -hmm. community like feel where people are really supporting and engaging each other and building relationships. Um, right. And then I think the third thing was really a good blend of, of, of what I call EQ and IQ. And so certainly you need all the technical concepts and understanding of business and how it, uh, and how it applies across all of the disciplines. But I also really wanted a school that focused on um, some of the other things that I really wanted, right, in terms of being able to drive change and lead change and, and help people develop and grow. And so um, I thought Keenan Flagler, just through my own observations, really had a great blend of that. And certainly I was also fortunate in my time at Deloitte. I also worked with a number of Keenan Flagler alum and getting a better sense of how they were um, their personalities and how they worked and also hearing um, what they, um, they were able to learn from that experience made a difference. And then last but not least, at the time, now that I'm remembering, both of my roommates at the time actually were Keenan Flagler undergrad alum. And so oh. while not MBA alum, um, it just kind of made a ton of sense based off of all the homework that I had done. How did you find Chapel Hill? Yeah, so I really enjoyed my time in Chapel Hill. Uh, great, phenomenal college town. Uh, and, and in part of the reason why I think, as I alluded to earlier, I mentioned that I really thought that I wanted to go to a school that had a really strong sense of community and at Chapel Hill really had that. And part of the reason why I think is just really around the fact that, um, when you go to a community kind of school, like a college town, people want to be there and invest in that community because that's the reason why they're there. Um, New York, Chicago, Boston, phenomenal cities We've lived in a couple of them. But when you go to business school there, a lot of the allure is for that particular city. But uh, I really found that Chapel Hill, the, in addition to it being a great college town, uh, my classmates, they really wanted to be there and they wanted to invest in the community and they wanted to get to know each other in a great way. And so uh, I have always been a little bit biased towards those MBA programs that tend to have a little bit more of that community feel. And Chapel Hill certainly gave that to me. Yeah, me too. So, um, did you go to business school knowing that you wanted to use the MBA to do something different? It's a good question. It's, it's a, a little, uh, yes and. Um, 
I knew that I enjoyed consulting and that I, I wanted to do it for a little bit longer, but I didn't know what else I wanted to do. And I also knew that I probably wasn't going to be a consultant forever. Um, it's a incredible opportunity, but it's a challenging lifestyle. And quite frankly, I just had so many interests that I just couldn't see myself doing one job or working in one industry for the rest of my career. Um, right. That said, I, I felt like, and the feedback I got from people who were in business school, they kind of told me that when you go to business school and you go to an MBA program through the classroom, as well as through going through the recruiting process and leadership development process, you really learn how to engage in opportunities, learn from them, and then figure out how they inform the future career choices that you make. Mm -hmm. And I knew that regardless of what I was going to end up doing, that was going to be a valuable set of skills to have. And so I couldn't say that I naturally knew that I wanted to work specifically in tech and marketing, but I did know that at least from my initial interests and having worked a lot with tech companies that technology was an industry that I was interested in. And certainly over my time at UNC and then even after that, that's where the, those experiences I had certainly informed some of those later decisions that I made in order to um, get to where I am. So didn't know exactly how it was all going to work out, but I had enough confidence at the time when I applied that um, this would be something valuable for my long-term career um, in addition to you know, the two years at Chapel Hill. So did you take certain electives or involve yourself in co-curricular activities Yes, uh, that, that led you to where you are now? Uh, no, absolutely. And so uh, I, a couple things that come to mind. So from like a, a, just a leadership perspective, one of the highlights of my experience was I was in like a lot of MBA students, I was super involved in undergrad. So I was student body president in the student government. And I did the very much the same thing when I was in business school. So I was a mm -hmm. part of the uh, MBA Student Association. I was one of the vice presidents. And as a leader, elected leader, um, I, one of the things I took part in was in a class specific, specifically for elected leaders. I mean, it was taught by a C-suite executive from an energy company in the area. Um, and she focused with us just basically on lessons of leadership that we would need when we got back into the working world. Um, and certainly she brought in guest speakers and there was a lot of personal development. And so that experience was incredibly valuable even now as I think about, you know, leading teams or leading projects and the like. But, you know, in addition to that, certainly as you think about things like tech or things like marketing, which I am involved in, I definitely took a ton of marketing related classes, whether it was digital strategy marketing or, um, you know, other types of classes that really focused on like entrepreneurship and innovation, um, because I knew that was something I was, I was curious about. And certainly, you know, the internships and experiences I had made a difference there too. And then I would say um, the nice thing sometimes about business school and a business school like UNC is that if you have an idea or if you have a skill that you want to explore, you get the chance to, to go and do that and to use the resources to help you do that. And so two things that come to mind, one is that I actually did an independent study um, during my second year that was all around this idea about storytelling and figuring out how can we use storytelling in a way um, to better communicate the value of UNC Keenan Flagler um, to admitted and prospective students. And so I worked on a number of projects that uh, really focused on some of those um, videos and communications we could use early on in the application process to let people know who we were. And certainly as a marketer, that is very much a skill that I use to this day. Um, but in addition to that, uh, bigger than that, one of the other things that I worked on, which you alluded to in the beginning, was um, MBA Schooled, which is the blog that I have, which is a guide to helping uh, current students really navigate business school. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I, even though I worked on my own, um, I had a lot of help along the way um, from professors, um, from administrators, from faculty. And certainly when I wrote the book, MBA Insider, um, some of the very first people that I called up to ask for help and for guidance were those same administrators and professors um, who had helped me in my time at UNC. So Al, in addition to uh, leadership development, which you mentioned right off the bat as the highlight of the program, yeah. were there other highlights that, had a, that made a meaningful difference to you? Yeah, sure. It's a good question. So yeah, I think the, when I think about the, the classroom experience, and, and I think you can get this pretty much at any program, but um, when you have professors who are on the front lines and a lot of times working with actual companies or leaders of companies through their research, as well as when you have classmates um, who come from industries that are sometimes very directly related to the case you're covering in a class or to the, um, you know, the topic that you're covering, right? Like that has so much rich, richness and, and value to it. And, and I mean, contextualizing that for this day and age, I mean, I'm, I've talked to a number of students who are in business school right now. And I think lately the classes have been super interesting, just given everything that's going on with COVID-19 and, you know, what professors are seeing from, 
you know, being in constant contact with leaders of organizations that they're advising, or, you know, even what students are, you know, seeing from the fact of what their old company was going through or any challenges of, that they've faced. And so, um, you know, for me, some of the more interesting moments were in those classroom discussions where people were kind of sharing those experiences. Um, we had a classmate who was uh, more or less the controller um, uh, for uh, the Korean government. And so, you know, in finance and accounting, I mean, certainly his rich, the richness of what he was saying was so valuable because it was very real. Um, and so there were so many of those moments in the classroom that I think, you know, added to the unique value of getting an MBA and the diversity and richness from the people that are within it. Um, but, uh, and, and then the last thing I would just say is that there are a lot of hands-on real world projects that you can get um, in the classroom, right? And so one that comes to mind is in my digital strategy class where we actually had to go and develop a digital strategy for um, a local organization and work with them to kind of come up with the idea to understand their challenges and their pain points and figure out how we could use media and technology um, to build a plan to help them grow uh, their customer base. And so there were plenty of, plenty of moments like that, but those are the ones that really stand out to me. Sure. And in addition to the business skills you learned and the experience you got through these projects, I'm wondering if you learned anything about yourself. Absolutely. I think that, so one very tactical thing was as a part of that elected leaders class, we got access to executive coaches and mm -hmm. being able to do 10 sessions with an executive coach is an incredible experience to have um, in terms of understanding your leadership style, understanding your strengths, your development opportunities, and having honest, raw conversations about the things you're doing well and the things that you could improve upon. Um, so yeah, I learned a lot about myself there, but I, you know, I, oft, I, I really think that an MBA is a great two-year reflection exercise for people because it provides you time and space to do that introspection. I mean, if you're going to business school, chances are you're going because you are successful and you've worked really hard. And sometimes when you're working hard, you don't have time to really think about what you've done or where you want to go. And so for me in business school, I think a couple of things I learned about myself. Um, number one, um, I get a lot of value in meeting out of being in service to others. And that really kind of manifested itself in terms of the amount of things I volunteered to raise my hand to be the leader for or to, you know, kind of be in a leadership type position. Um, I think the second thing is it really crystallized for me um, what was success, what success meant in my career. I, you know, I've always been a part of organizations that uh, were high brand, high value, and that had a lot of hierarchies. And that can be valuable in a lot of ways because it can give you um, markers to kind of see what success could look like. But at the end of the day, the only success that really matters is the success for yourself. And so it really gave me time to really think about and define what success was going to look like for me after I graduated and laser in on that. And, and yeah, you know, I certainly want to be um, rewarded when I do a good job or, you know, certainly a little more money is never a bad thing, but it really helped me crystallize to me what was what was important uh, was important for me. And I think the last thing I would say is that it also probably gave me more confidence that things were going to work out. And I think that naturally a part of business school that I think a lot of people struggle with at times is that you are surrounded by so many smart and talented people. It can sometimes be uh, feel a little overwhelming or you feel a little bit overmatched because you may not measure up. But when you see everyone else who's kind of going through that same struggle, you start to realize that we're all just trying to figure it out. And you're given a set of resources in business school and access to people who are supporting you along the way to kind of help you make sense of that. And so um, I, I really do think it was a valuable exercise in self-reflection um, for myself, but I also know that a lot of other people feel the same way. Yeah, that's great. What's it like to work uh, with an executive coach? Because I think, you know, a lot yeah. of MBAs have never done that before. Yeah. Most yeah. programs now have uh, one-on-one yeah. -on -one sessions. Yeah. The fact that you spent 10 yeah. uh, tells me a lot about how important executive coaching is at Keenan Flagler because yeah. I would think that most MBAs do not get to have 10 sessions. Sure. But what is that like? Yeah. So uh, at times it can be really challenging because they, they have you talk about things that sometimes you don't want to talk about, right? Or like that are hard <laughs> to talk about, right? Or sometimes they ask you questions where you don't know the answer when they first ask it and you're forced to really think deeply. Um, and it, it, can be, it can be pretty personal in, in that respect, but it can also be incredibly rewarding, right? Because they're not there to judge you. They're not there to tell you what you should or shouldn't be. They're really there to shine a mirror back onto you to help you see things in a way that you couldn't see them before and then to help you make sense of it. I mean, it, I think like many things in life, it is what you make of it. And I would also admit that um, 
10 wasn't the amount that I was given. 10 was the amount I did because I asked for more. Um, but like, also that was great on UNC for when I raised my hand to be like, I think this would be even more valuable. Will you let me do it longer? Uh, they were like, sure, go ahead. And, and it really speaks to their commitment to helping people um, develop themselves. But like, uh, and the other thing I would also say is that many of these coaches, I mean, they come in all, all shapes and sizes in terms of their backgrounds, but hearing, um, it was actually in many ways um, comforting to hear that some of the challenges that I, were fa I was facing are some of the similar challenges that executives who have accomplished way more than I have are struggling to deal with. And so, you know, I went to business school fairly early in my career. I was maybe 24, 25. And the fact that in some respects, certainly not all, but in some respects, I was um, progressing along at a rate that some of these other people who were way more experienced um, were still struggling to figure out. That gave me some confidence to know that, okay, number one, this is a valuable exercise. And number two, if I continue to do this, like I have the confidence in myself that I will continue to be able to evolve and grow and, and to be that leader that I want to be. Right. Now you went back to Deloitte, but in a different role uh, to work for Deloitte Digital in the Bay Area after you graduated. Yeah. Uh, and now you're at Salesforce. Were yeah. there specific things that you learned in your MBA program that helped you uh, both go to your new job uh, at Deloitte yeah. and then to move on to Salesforce? Yeah, sure. So I think the uh, in business school, there's a lot of focus in terms of trying to identify the internship uh, for your summer internship between the first and second year and the full-time offer, you know, after you graduate. But the hidden thing of all of that is that the skills that make you successful in those endeavors are skills you actually need to take with you for the rest of your career. The first job you get out of business school for mo the majority of people is not going to be the last one. And so right. to the degree that you can kind of learn those skills, get comfortable with them. Um, that will not only help you in terms of being able to find a new job when you have to find a new job, but I also think it helps you in terms of your own career development within the confines of a specific role, whether that means um, reaching for new assignments or, you know, reaching for a scope change or, or something like that. And so, yes, I mean, I think fundamentally what it stems back to, to what I was saying before is that it's being able to take a set of experiences that you have decouple kind of the skills that made you successful in those experiences, and then ask yourself, what do I want to do more of? What do I want to do less of? And if I want to do something different, how do I take what I've done in the past, identify something else that's out there, and then use the networking, the interview skills, um, the uh, just making sense of the environment to go and find that opportunity. And all of those are things that you learn when, you know, you have to um, build a company list of companies that you're interested in. Those are the things that you learn when you have to do informational interviews with second year students um, and alum to learn more about those fields. Those are the skills you learn when you go through a couple of really bad interviews where you trip <laughs> up or you don't, you know, you're not successful and you have to take those learnings and, and do them again. And so um, when I was looking to make a career change um, from Deloitte to the technology company that I'm at now, um, yeah, like I, I very much used a lot of those same skills to identify that opportunity. And in addition to that, um, one of the things that I've always learned, but is stressed more in business school than ever is this idea around relationship building and networking, right? right? And the part of the reason I think I was successful in terms of making that transition to the new firm that I'm at was because um, networking wasn't something I did in the moment. It had been something I had been continuously doing all along. And when the opportunity came up, I'm um, kind of out of the blue. It was because of a weak tie, if you will, who remembered that I had this specific skill set and said, hey, you know, would you be interested in this? And so that helped me make the move. But that, that stems from you know, learning in business school that like, hey, like, you can't just go around asking people to write you a referral. Like, you actually have to build meaningful relationships um, so that they look out for you in the future. So it absolutely played a role in helping me navigate that transition. And that's a skill that's going to serve you well over sure. your entire career. Yeah, of course. Of course. Absolutely. So, so what's your core advice? Uh, remember back when you were in that phase when you were applying and doing your GMAT or your GRE and all the stress and anxiety yeah. that's involved in that process. What, what's your core advice for a, a, someone who's an applicant uh, who has his sights or her sights set on yeah. King Flag? Yeah, sure. So I think that, and this is hard to, to keep in mind when you're going through it, but the, the process of going to business school is actually, even though it's rigorous, it is helpful in so many ways. Um, just as I was saying that business school can be a really great self-reflection exercise, I think the MBA application process can be the same for many applicants as well. 
because when you have to write on in an essay and answer the question, what are your short or long-term goals? Or like, why do you want to go to school X? Like you actually have to think about, well, what is the, what are the reasons that I actually want to do this? Or like, what am I hoping to achieve? Like, and, and then to think about, all right, well, like if this is what I'm hoping to achieve, how does the school actually support that? And then certainly you go out and do the research and look at poets and quants and talk to alum from the school and go figure that out. And so even when it is stressful or even when it seems like a lot of work, I think trusting the process and, and getting the most out of it, I think can be really valuable. Maybe not immediately, maybe not immediately, but over the longer term. And so it's just to stick with it. And I think the other thing to keep in mind, particularly because I think the world that has a lot of challenges in it right now is that the MBA is a two, the full-time MBA is a two year investment. That's going to empower, empower the next 35 to 40 years, right. Of your career. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the short term of that is going to be whatever you decide to do for your summer internship or go through for a full-time offer. But it's really going to give you a set of skills. that's going to go with you um, for the rest of your career. And um, I was trying to remember off the top of my head, but there's a stat out there um, that's, that is basically maybe about 20 to 25% of the jobs that are going to exist in five years. We don't know what they are yet. Right. And so the, the point is, is that, um, what you're looking for, like, yes, it's going to have some immediate short-term benefits in terms of getting into something new, hopefully a salary bump, but there are some long-term values that come from this that you may not be able to envision them right away, but it's important to keep that in mind because your MBA does go with you for the rest of your career. And as you think about what school do I want to be associated with? Um, Cause that will go with you the rest of your career as well. Right. In terms of the alum that you yeah. associate with your classmates and the like, and you will certainly lean on them and they will lean on you far after your time in business school. Um, and with specific to Keenan Flagler, um, I, I think it just like with any school, get to know the students and get to know the alum. And I would say, talk to current students, but then also talk to alum who are just graduating, talk to alum who are five years out and talk to alum who are 10 years out and kind of get their perspective. Um, but I do think that because you're going to be spending a lot of time with these people, um, it'll be a good chance for you to kind of get a sense of, are these the types of people that I want to take classes with 12 yeah. to 14 hours a day? or that I want to be in a study room with or a virtual study room with um, working with on something, right? Because it is a very immersive experience like that. And um, hopefully they are because, um, uh, but wherever you go, I think that's going to be important as well. Great. Well, Al, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciated it. And it was a pleasure to meet you. Yes. Thank you, John. Virtually at least. Yes, of course. Of course. And good luck to you at Salesforce. Thank you. Um, hopefully I'll be seeing you on the streets of San Francisco someday. Yes. Likewise. <laughs> All right, that's Al D. Uh, he graduated from UNC's Kenyon Flagler School five years ago. Twenty five years ago. Yep. I bet you it feels like yesterday. <laughs> yes, it does. It's funny. We were supposed to have our um, you know five year reunion um, maybe a month ago, and obviously, unfortunately, that um, that's not going to happen at, at this point. Perhaps in the future, but yeah, it does go by. It does go by fast, but um, it it also makes it incredibly worthwhile as well, just to kind of see what I've been able to do in five years in in five years and. You know, certainly a lot of the challenges in the real world right now, but it also makes me excited about, you know, what else I and my classmates are going to be able to do in the next five and, and 10 and the like. Terrific. So, yeah. And, you know, if you want more of Al's advice, go to mbaschool.com uh, or read his Facebook page. Um, a lot of good stuff there, along with his podcast and his book, of course. So, Al, thank you very much. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants at Center Court. See you soon.